Ladies, welcome to Open Jaw, and I am so pleased to have you on the show because it is really important to celebrate the achievements of the advisors out there. You guys work so hard. Condé Nast has awarded you with a Top Travel Specialist Award, which is a major honor uh, for you and for direct travel, obviously. Can you each tell me, um, just in, in a couple of sentences, what this means to you, this award personally? Um, well, it's funny because when we were asked that earlier and I saw Ariane and Lisa's um, answer, they were so nice thanking everybody, uh, just <laughs> so thoughtful. Um, my original answer to this question was that um, when I was a young kid, my dad got the Condé Nast magazine and I read it religiously cover to cover. Right. And I said, I'm going to be a writer move to New York, and I'm going to work for Condé Nast and travel the world. That was my goal in life. I was always going to do until I discovered I can't write. So right. <laughs> that I could be up, a problem. Yeah, that could be a problem. So I ended up going to travel school. So when I applied for this and got it, it was kind of like a full circle a mm -hmm. moment. So well, that's such that's, a great so story. That's what it meant for me. Yeah, 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 no, I love that. I love that. Ariane, what does it mean to you personally? Um, again, it's just, you're kind of, I've said it, I, I mean, I'm grateful. It's, it's kind of interesting because, um, again, it's a magazine that I have subscribed to for many, many years myself. And, you know, I always, it's always on my coffee table and it's always a point of, you know, um, inspiration, I guess you could yeah. say, so even when I was going through some hard times, you know, in, in my life and I'd always kind of like, it was my joy. <laughs> <laughs> so again but the thing is for me too it's also I'm relatively newer to the industry so I've only been a travel advisor since 2016 so for me to be amongst that list and have people like Catherine and Lisa and Nancy who have been in the industry for many many years I'm I'm grateful and humbled because I'm just like wow okay so perfect I I, I made it <laughs> That's so great. I love that. Lisa, what about you? So um, we're, we grew up in a traveling family. So from way back, we used to load the family station wagon to go down to Florida and drive that 1500 miles from Toronto. <laughs> and we've, we've been, um, you know, loving the Condé Nast magazine. Nancy and I actually come from the corporate world. We had, uh, finance and systems um, jobs for 20 plus years. And we're actually relatively new to the travel industry, just 10 years. So I had the subscription to Condé Nast because it was a printing company and actually the company printed Condé Nast. And so I subscribed to Condé Nast, oh, for years and years, all during the corporate life so that I could dream about what I wanted to do yeah. And we ditched the corporate life, took off the shackles 10 years ago, and we're into the travel full time now. And it, we've never looked back. It's just been fantastic. And the fact that we were um, chosen by Condé Nast to be a travel specialist really rings true and brings everything full circle to the dream. Like Ariane had mentioned, from when we were children, and as Catherine had talked about, wanting to be part of that travel magazine and travel life. It's just uh, gives me chills just thinking about it just now. Be four of 450 people in the world, including travel suppliers. That's yeah. just what makes it that much more special and yeah. almost needle in a haystack. Yeah. So tell me uh, lastly, just about your luxury business. How is it going? Um, what are you selling? What are you seeing out in the marketplace? Because I really want to understand luxury a little bit better. And you guys are out there living the dream as far as I'm concerned. So, Catherine. Um, what have I been selling? What have been the big trips? There's been a bunch of families, three-generation families, going on big trips to uh, Japan, Middle East, um, that kind of thing. Have been the the big big ones morocco nice. um so obviously having multi-gen go to the far east is is good revenue yes yes 
Yeah. Private private planes. Holy. Yeah. So the whole shebang. The, nice. Nice. That is really, really nice to hear. I love it. Okay. But you know, I love doing the smaller trips too. I had um a couple from Houston. I did a great out west Canada trip and um you know, they did everything from stay in a floating hotel in Tofino, where they the guy picked up crab bucket, uh, crab mm -hmm. um, cages and brought it to them the night. And they were kind of stuck out there for 24 hours. And, you know, they kept going, well, we should do this activity. And I said, no, no, you have to trust me. Just stay there. And I got just as much satisfaction out of them calling me afterwards going, that was the most incredible experience of my life. Um and it wasn't even wasn't even like the most expensive thing by far I've ever booked. So um to me it's it's about the coming up with the cool experiences and 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 having the client kind of not argue with you, but go, okay, I'll trust you on this one. Let's hope it goes okay. And then have them come back and say, Wow, that is the most satisfaction I get. That's the gold, right? That's the gold of being a travel advisor is is helping people have those experiences. And that's what I think a lot of consumers need to understand is you know what you're doing and trust you and um, therefore spend their money in a wiser way, whether it's a lot or a little, as you said. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ariane, you take people on on trips yourself sometimes or or talk to me a bit about your business model. Japan is really popular right now, um, Europe, um, and definitely more, I would say the shift in focus has been more definitely the experiential side of things. So again, they don't necessarily want to go to Rome. They want to see something that's a little bit more quieter or cultural. So yeah, it's been, it, and it's fulfilling because you know that you're actually helping local destinations as well. Um, because it's more sustainable travel or purposeful travel. Sustainable. That's, that's another whole topic. I'd love to hear more about as to whether or not it is a hot button for your clients or not. Um, Lisa, talk to me about your business. What is I see a safari behind you? So that's of course, um, huge, uh, I think, uh, market seller right now. Um, yeah, we mostly specialize in small ship luxury expedition, um, off the beaten path type, well, where is everyone else going? Let's go somewhere else. So everyone is going to Europe, let's send them somewhere else. Let's send them to Asia, let's go on safari now. Um, better to go now than later on. Um, and so we do specialize in a lot of safari, East Africa, Southern Africa, and um, Galapagos, animal, animal driven uh, trips for people, but a lot of bucket list. And weird things too um, a train trip through the stands uh, fantastic uh, travel where somebody's going to somewhere where they really feel that they need an experienced travel advisor to help them um, through the pitfalls or potential pitfalls mm -hmm. of traveling off the beaten path or into somewhere more exotic that has a lot of things that can go wrong and during the pandemic, one of the things that we, uh, we've we done and we do is we have WhatsApp, um, we set up WhatsApp with the clients so that we're in co constant communication with them while they're away, while they're en route, so that they feel like they're with us the entire time. So any if anything happens, if they just Smart. wanna check yeah. in with photos, and with that was one of the things in our application. We had some clients that were out there um, when when uh, the world shut down, and one of our single clients was coming back from New Zealand. She said, "I felt like you were holding my hand all the oh, way through and right. on the way home." So we really, really tried to do something special and something off the uh, off the radar, um, and going like Sam and going where the others are not going, and guiding our clients that way. Amazing. Love it. You each have so much to share in terms of your background and your your business um, wisdom, really. I mean, that's what it is. Ultimately, you're running a business, although you're selling travel, but you're you're 
doing it in such a smart way because you're hitting all the right markers as far as I'm concerned. Um, and, and from the pandemic, you know, all the research that we've been running uh, said that people now will be looking to advisors for that handholding that you're just referring to. And, and I think you guys are all experiencing that. You're waving, you're waving, you're shaking your heads. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. And, and major congratulations once again um, on being awarded again, the, the, the Condé Nast Specialist Award. That is just amazing. And I, I feel I feel pride in the Canadians that got the award because like, woohoo, go Canada um, and go direct travel. Thank you so much, ladies.